today we're doing a look for the holiday, whatever you celebrate. Okay, so I have nothing on my skin and we're gonna start with concealer. Okay, so I'm using right now Pat McGrath concealer. Um, because in the winter, my skin is quite dry and dehydrated. Um, since I have bone milk, it's much, much, I mean, it's day and night. So I love this one because it's dewy, but it also kind of, um, it's easy to apply. It's not going everywhere. You know, you have some, like, as soon as you apply, it's kind of going back with the sponge. So you take really a minute to really blend it. And you see this one really, really uh, fused with the skin super well. But I have quite dark, dark circles. And it's gone right now, thanks to it. So, so far, so very good. Maybe I'll put a little bit on my eyelid because after I'm gonna put some fresh colors. Always around my lips, but you know the drill. And the rest of the skin, I leave it bare. We're gonna use Laura Mercier for this pink. Is that one a pink? That's also like not too, I wanna say acidic, I don't know if that makes any sense. Not too um, saturated, quite soft. This is the color. Uh, there is a little sort of neutral tone in it. And that's going to be really great with the color palette we're using today because I don't want to go too, too strong. And in the winter, because I am, like that's a paler I can be right now, I'm kind of adding and I'm very yellow undertone. I'm adding whatever's left on the brush on my face. Maybe I'll use a bit of terracotta actually to warm up my complexion a bit. But when I use it with pink blush like now, I'm gonna use it more focused on the outside. And maybe a bit the nose. Like this is kind of where I add the most. A highlighter, Bomb Shine. So I kind of go all over the apple because you know some people they wear um, highlighter or they put anything glowy on the skin and they look glowing and you're exactly the same and you don't. It's also a matter of features like um, uh, your bone structure. I have a bone structure that's quite, it's not flat but I mean I'm, I'm narrow, I don't have a lot of volume so it doesn't, um, it's really not gonna go out there to catch the light, I don't like to explain this in English, that makes sense. So I'm not going to be those ones where I show, uh, I remove my blush, I'm going to add any more. I really show shine. So that's why by adding the highlighter quite large all over this sort of like area of the apple of the cheeks will help to give this like sort of feeling of more plumness on the cheeks. A little bit of this guy in the corner of my eyes and yeah, voila. Then brown eye pencil, I'm gonna do it on the mirror. So if you follow me, you know that I go really, really between the lashes, not in the waterline. I don't go in the waterline, I don't go on top. You see, I close my eyes, you don't see it. I open, you see the waterline doesn't have it. And that's how you really paint the roots of your lashes. I'm gonna put a tiny, tiny, tiny bit, really thin line that I'm gonna bring with my finger by the lash line. And so if I don't put a little bit more darkness by my lashes, it makes my eyes um, with like a lighter color, it kind of erases my features. So by adding a tiny, tiny bit of darkness by the lash line, it's really helping me to define my my eye eyes. But for some people, they really don't need it. It depends. So I'm doing always a sort of little smushed here, and then with my finger, I put it up. So it gives me a sort of a sort of 
mini mini kadai. Okay, so that's the base of this. Now we're gonna use tendre corail. That you, if you watch some of my live, I said that I'm gonna change it a tiny bit to make it a tiny bit more pink. So I'm gonna make that happen now, and then you'll be able to see what I have in mind. Uh, I do what I call the drop technique, which is about putting a tiny bit, like a drop, on the center of the normal eyelid, and then. Um, you see how pigmented it is? Uh, the coffee is your paint, oh, no joke. Uh, then I'm going to blend it all over the normal part of the eyelid. Really make sure you go close to the roots. And, and then once I feel like I've used all the formula with my brush, I can start to go a little bit more on the edge to make sure it's uh, creating this sort of like little Ombre. Facing your light because I feel like you didn't see anything with the other lights. So drop up and then I go really close by my lash line and then I start to go more up and when I feel like I don't really have any formula anymore I go even more up and that's how you create a super quick ombre with your paint. I'm gonna grab a little bit of this guy that's more pink and add it on the bottom lash line. I'm not using your paint on the bottom because I want something really soft and not strong, not too pigmented. Voilà, just to give a little Hello of, uh, of this color on the bottom of my lid. Then, mascara. I'm using Climax. So I always go with black. I tried once a deep blue, I quite liked it. With like a blue eyeliner. Maybe I should try something like this again one day. And then the bottom. Oops, okay, so that's perfect. What happens when you do a little smushed? How do you say that? Smushed. Smushed? 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 You and I both don't speak English. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of on the bottom. So when you do mascara on the bottom, really focus on uh, the roots more. Uh, when you have a little, we don't know how to call it, on your eyelid like this and you did a nice ombre and you really pissed that happens, let it dry, be patient. So it's not ideal for a YouTube video because you're gonna see me with this so people who just join will be like, uh, did she see that? She has this beep on her eyelid, but it's fine, we'll keep it. That way I can show you. I'm gonna do a little bit of my eyebrow. I'm very excited for this lip. I mean, I never use this one. It's number 14 from Sephora. But these are, this, this is the color we're gonna use. It's incredible. So I thought, okay, this might work. Uh, but this is not the color, this one, that I think will really be nice on me. So we're gonna apply and see. But if it, if it doesn't, it's fine. We'll put glitter on top. But at least it might be a good base. We'll try. In your shape with this. Let's go back to our thingy. Uh, now it's really dry. 
I'm gonna brush it off. Oh, actually, it works better with the. Um, so that's gone. Why not? Put a bit of pink again. Okay. Basically, you can just wait for it to dry, and then you use a bit of this, and you have this guy. And it should be fine. Right, let's uh, put some glitter. So I have Danisa gloss. So if you have a um, here, I'm gonna take a bit of glitter. If you have a lipstick in this tone, uh, that's a bullet lipstick. You don't need to buy this one. And and then if it's a bit more, a bit less matte, it might be easier even to apply it. So when you apply glitter, try to kind of make your lips really spread like this, so you can apply the glitter. Uh, everywhere really well. So put very little amount of gloss, otherwise it's gonna be, it's not gonna last really well. If you're going to eat uh, a lot and a uh, dental night, whatever, then you might want to use a glitter glue. We'll put it in the caption, it's from Benai, and that's not gonna move all night. But I don't wanna wear something so strong, so that's why I'm using a, a lip gloss. Can you kiss someone? Uh, Will it transfer? Yes, with lip gloss, that's a good question. With lip gloss, it's gonna transfer. But with um, with the glitter glue, it will not. Okay, and then when you have glitter on your chin, same guy. So for comfort, you don't want to think about it, you want to wear it and not even really feel it. Definitely Benai glitter glue will be the best. I just wanted something uh, that is going to be com not comfortable to wear because in a way you feel like it's a bit fragile so that makes it a little bit you know, so it makes you a bit self-aware of it but um so I won't say it's the most comfortable to wear a lip gloss but I just wanted something very very easy to remove uh, not too strong so I that's why I'm using a lip gloss but make it super super thin on your lips the thinner your glitter is, the better it is also to stick on it and not move. These ones are a bit chunky, so that's why it also really makes it uh, harder to really adhere to the glass, but I wanted to use biodegradable. But also the thinner it is, the, the safest it is for the environment. Uh, but voila. So definitely, I would advise more the glitter, I think. But you know, it's a big bottle, so if you're not using glitter all the time, you may not want to buy such a big bottle. So, that's why I wanted to show you the option of doing it with a lip gloss. And then I'm going to use the same lip gloss on my eyes a bit here. And so what I like to do is kind of really warm it up on my finger. So it's really, really thin. And I'm going to Put it all over. And yes, it's going to migrate. So not as much when you use your um, paint because it's so, uh, it lasts so well and so long that it's, it's much more resistant. And also not so much when you apply a very, very thin layer like I just did without dragging. Like as soon as you're gonna, imagine you take a brush, you grab a bunch of the eyeglass, you put it on your eyelid, the brush is kind of gonna take the eyeshadow with it so that makes it also um, you know it, it will make your eyeshadow migrate even quicker so by doing a very thin line a layer and just like really padding on top of it like a stamp that will uh, kind of avoid any accident but eyeglass that's how it is it migrates and I don't mind I actually like it I'm putting a bit of eyeglass underneath. I love the lip like this. It's so fun. It's like a piece of jewelry. You have to see it like an accessory. That's why, I mean, I love wearing a hoodie with this kind of look. 
uh, because I feel like it creates uh, such a nice balance, also so comfortable. So I'm going to show you a sneak peek of what I'm doing for the holiday because you know, it started to be in this thing of uh, dolls and little houses and things like this. She was she was not before, and um, and I decided to make myself uh, the dollhouse. A because I need something I do on my own, like really relaxing, like a sort of a hobby or something. And that's a short term hobby. Um, because I'm just like basically working or taking care of my family. So I decided I need a little something I can do. I love doing things with my hands, so that's perfect. I love the idea of making something for her that she can keep. Uh, if she has children, she can pass it on. And um, it's not just something you buy, you just love it, you buy it, it's done and you gift it. I feel like she will see me do it and, and she can remember uh, that it was a labor of love, basically. So you can see a bit of the paint and the wallpaper and the things that I already got. I'll show you just a sneak peek because it's so fun. And if it interests you, I'll show you the evolution of the house. Okay, let's go. So basically I'm going to change this into an uh, atelier <laughs> for a dollhouse and I have this like little book with some inspiration. I started to receive some paint, some glue, um, I kind of took some of her painting to see colors she uses herself usually to try to be inspired by that and, uh, and then the house will come here and I have all the wallpaper, all the little accessory around. I want to show you the dollhouse. So this is the house. I buy everything on Etsy. I'm a huge, huge Etsy fan. Uh, and I found this house. So, you know, I can like put even little flowers here, put the number, of the street here, of the house. Basically, I have to do everything. Okay. So that's the house. On Etsy, you can find all this stuff. The Frenchies, the Boursin. Oh man, it's insane. Can you believe this? Okay, so this is the house. It came with all the pieces. All the little pieces of, of these guys. And so we put it together. I used that glue. And now that it's dry, I'm gonna put it on my desk and finish this. I mean, finish. I'm like so far from being finished. This is a floor. How cute that is. And I'm not finishing the rest of the house because I want to paint everything inside. Okay. I'm definitely not gonna put this yet. She's too little. She might like completely trash this. So, yeah. But we have all of this to put in, and then you have the roof, and then the door with like little windows. It's incredible. Almost done. I mean, so not almost done. <laughs> lots, lots of work to do. We'll keep you posted. Let's see what I'm doing with this, but I'm so excited. Um, and I wish you guys a very happy season. Have fun, and I hope you'll be with the ones you love.